So we've, we've titled this Bring the Art to Life. Um, the, the crux of the, the conversation is surrounded uh, by the combination of physical and digital. A lot of y'all might be NFT holders, so you have a digital asset, and uh, us at Galileo and then my panelists are part of that future of what does it look like with this, this innovation with, with uh, art becoming both in the, the digital world, in the metaverse, as well as, as physical. So let's go go around the room with introductions. Let's start with you because you have the uh, the mic, Ishmael. Introduce yourself. Tell us about your company, what you're working on. Um, yeah, let's about a minute elevator pitch of of Ishmael and your company. Sure. Can you hear me? Yes, works. Fantastic. Good. So my name is Ismail Tazi. I'm the founder of Tram Paris, and I'm also the CEO of uh, Web3 Community Club CPG. Tram Paris is at the intersection of art design and technology, whereas Club CPG aims to lead the conversation around um, uh, generative consumer goods. So at Tram, you might know us for uh, some collections we did with generative artists, where we pair generative artists with the uh, generational craftsmen. First collection was generative tapestry with Mac Tweetwee, known for the friendship bracelets uh, with our blocks. The second one is with Martin Grasser, generative mirrors handcrafted in Venice. Third, Jeff Davis, and lastly, uh, Aranda Dalash. All these collections have been powered by our blocks engine technology. Thank you. All right, yeah, let's hand it over to Martin. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm the CMO of uh, Artray.app, which is a marketplace, an art marketplace for reward assets. So it's not like an NFT marketplace that maybe you're used to uh, about digital art or digital NFTs. It's only about real art. So you can actually see behind you, uh, if you want to turn around the big screens about our new feature, which is the fragment feature about tokenizing a Pablo Picasso drawing. So we can uh, invest in a fraction of a Pablo Picasso drawing. This is our new feature. The marketplace actually exists for a few years with some um, contemporary artists and um, that you can buy uh, the whole painting, but as a reward asset linked through NFTs. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Basically. And Tony. Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm Tony Herrera. I'm a member of the uh, punk community. There's uh, some punks here in the front row. Um, I'm mostly uh, right now working on Obscura DAO, which is a photography DAO in the photography NC space. So we're here talking about fashion. You can't think of photography without thinking about fashion. Yeah. And uh, Tony is going to be the journeyman this morning. He's uh, he's going to be on some future panels with us as well. So just thank you. Um, I think we're we're going to get comfortable on the stage together. <laughs> the first panel, it'd be great yeah. to work work things out and get the ball rolling. Um, I'm excited to talk about physical art um, and and the you know kind of the combination. We've got upcoming. We've got marketplaces. We've got um, you know what what you're working on. So um, I want to touch on you, Martin, first. Um, we've got with uh, with our trade, building a marketplace. You mentioned Picasso. Um, I know that there are similar, uh, I'd say, web two iterations of, of you know, our trade is building, of, a mar of, of an art marketplace, a, an investable type of asset. How does, what is um, bringing an art piece on chain? How does that differ from, say, like what Masterworks is doing or one of those? Yeah, so basically, uh, we, in, we, we go further into the accessibility and the liquidity because with what we offer, the accessibility on the secondary market is actually from $1. So that's not something that our Web2 counterparts mm -hmm. can offer. And also uh, the liquidity, which is uh, on a DEX, decentralized exchange, mm -hmm. which is uh, basically instant and uh, free which is not something that our uh, Web2 counterparts can offer. But basically, we go further into this concept of fractionalization, um, but it's the same concept as Masterworks, for those who know Masterworks. We just go on chain and further, basically. Yeah, and, and I can imagine, um, oh, I guess I'll ask you, as far as the, uh, the same kind of, with Masterworks, you have, say, accredited investor status. You have to be um, either a, have a certain level of net worth and you have to have uh, or education, uh, basically. Uh, is that the same concept or is it more democratized with? Um... I would say it's more democratized, though. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, you're investing in a piece of art. So you must 
know what you're investing in. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily easy to understand the market, to understand what this piece actually is. So I need education is always a requirement, I would say, in, in investment. But uh, I think we are, yeah, we are pretty much accessible to anyone. Um, you don't need anything to be anyone or to have anything more than what you're willing to invest to come to us. Yeah. And um, what, uh, what, what this will kind of will uh, begin to, to trickle around the room. Um, but as far as uh, a chain, specific chain that you've launched on or available on? Yeah, we're on Solana. We are Solana, okay. fully on Solana. So yeah, basically you need a Solana wallet, like Phantom wallet or whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and yeah, there's so, so many technical com aspects and, and things that are involved with deciding a chain. Ishmael, as far as, you know, your artwork taking... You know, as far as my research has been kind of taking the digital and moving it into a, a physical presence, um, as, as, as far as chain restrictions or technical infrastructure, um, is there any specific chain that y'all have focused on or what does that look like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So f for us, we actually start from the physical and then the digital, uh, the algorithm is, is minted and then generates the output that is informed by the physical constraints of the yeah. craft. And then we make it, we make it. So every output is actually feasible. In terms of chain with uh, Ethereum, since we work with the uh, Rblox engine, okay. and uh, we're very, very happy. And myself, I'm uh, very bullish on Ethereum. Yeah. And then, uh, Tony, uh, as far as Obscura DAO and photography, we know, you know, the problem with ETH and the gas fees and all that stuff um, is, is, are y'all also focused on a specific chain or is it? So, so Obscura, when it comes to photography, is uh, chain agnostic. We, if the artist wants to print, mint on Solana or whatever, whatever chain they want to mint on, that's, we, you know, for, for photographers that we represent or that we, that we get into the space, we're, we primarily started with Ethereum, but we're not, you know, we're not, we're flexible. It's like, sure. you want to mint on whatever you want to mint on, it's, it's up to you. And yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, but, uh, go ahead. Just to yeah. touch on Tram Paris, because uh, Ishma, so Ishma was working on this fabulous project because it starts with physical first, which is something that's really interesting. For a long time, we thought, okay, tokens are all digital, right? And it's digital art. But with Tram and there's a, there's a Tram in Paris and a bunch of other uh, projects, uh, I can think of like uh, Deppy with hash marks. Uh, there's, there's a lot of work being done with physical. This product, for instance, is a physical is a physical product that is also tokenized. So each each garment is tokenized, and I think it's really interesting for us to think about it in the sense of like, for Tron Paris, it's all about generative goods, a one of one of many. Mm -hmm. So when you think about a uh, a sculpture or a piece of furniture, that furniture can be unique in the sense that it's one of one. So for instance, they have some fantastic artists, um, besides Mac Judy, the Jeff Davis. Uh, you know, Martin Grasser. They have, so the aspect of the fact that you have tokenized, you have tokenized art, w the fact that we can actually tokenize any item within a household, you can tokenize this chair and this chair can be unique is really fascinating when it comes to the tokenization and the generative goods. Yes. So for us, actually, the, the NFT plays a double role. So it's both a work of art because it's a generative art NFT mm -hmm. and also it has those technicalities because it's it's uh, crystallizes the, the the digital creation yeah. so and i think that is what is um that's what beautiful about generative art as a medium is that your 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 nft is is uh, is a work of art on mm -hmm. top of those technical uh, aspects picking up on uh tokenization for instance um recently towards the end of last year i went to patagonia and uh picked up a hash marks from uh from deaf Peep, right and it was fascinating to me because it started off with basically, through bright moments, a golden ticket. So, so basically a token that allowed you to be present in Patagonia and then convene with the artist in Patagonia mm. to essentially choose a sculpture. One of a hundred sculptures where you took the sculpture home and through the sculpture in the back, it had a hash mark or essentially a, a reveal code with a serial number. So the serial number, you could basically get your digital token. So for me, it was like kind of an aha moment because it was like, wait, this is actually a really interesting experience. 
and you already see it with clothing, right? Like you have a number of brands, you have 90CC, you have, you have a number of brands that where you basically start off with a physical and then you essentially claim the, the, mm -hmm. the token that allows you to, Emmerich is just doing it right now. There's, uh, there's, there's uh, their, their hoodies that they're doing where you're getting a wallet. So you're getting an NFT that's a wallet that also can accumulate experience tokens, right? Mm -hmm. We have B in the house is launching her, her, her project with, you know, House, uh, House of Apes, or Queen of Hoa. So is that, is that this, it's Hoa, but it's House of House of Apes, right? Yes. Um, so you have a, a lot of really interesting uh, projects that are moving into fashion, which is tokenized fashion. But beyond tokenized fashion, luxury fashion, if you will, there's different levels of experiences that come about. And so with Tram, for instance, you have a token of a particular item, generative good that can basically be limited in supply where basically you say this chair will there'll only ever be one of this chair right mm -hmm. so as a collector you actually decide the on the rarity of your piece okay. and i think uh, that is that is very interesting and also uh, adding to what tony said i think uh, there are a lot of uh, companies that are now experimenting with uh, that conversation between digital and physical mm -hmm. he mentioned that uh, the Dev Beef uh, uh, um, artwork is, was, was amazing. Like th there were a lot of collectors who went with Bright Moments to Patagonia and came back. Wow, like this, the, the experience was fabulous. And they were able to redeem the NFT through this um, uh, seed that is on the, on the physical piece. Mm -hmm. So I think now where we're trying, you know, we first started with digital only. And then we started with physical that is somehow linked to the digital asset. And now we're starting to experiment in more about that conversation and how, how it's going to be seamless, how it's going to be more intuitive. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where, where we're going. And it's very interesting because you see like the, the, the experience in, in Patagonia, everyone talks about it. Mm -hmm. And, and that is unique. And I feel that's what tokenization also brings in terms of user experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's, um, I, I'm curious because we have our trade that is uh, specifically people are on the marketplace to invest in an asset that will appreciate in value and they can have some sort of a, a yield. Um, with one of ones, it becomes a little bit more interesting or a nuanced, uh, you know, possible investment. Are you noticing that a lot of the artists that you're working with, um, the one of ones, the physical and the digital tied together, um, they're investing with any sort of intent for yield, or is it more um, they're buying, in, you know, as a as a collector, and they they plan on just holding it for. So at Tram, uh, it's high end art and design. So we actually do not uh, sell to uh, to collectors who we know would would sell it and make a profit okay. quickly. Like we pick our we are we are. Uh, we are fortunate enough to pick our collectors. It's also very limited uh, edition, like the sculptures by Jeff Davis are eight uh, stained glass pieces. Uh, the Martin Grasser are uh, uh, 10. Uh, nine of them are already sold. One is going to be auctioned with Christie's uh, in, in, in July. So we really uh, uh, pick and we're not into that um, uh, game of... Uh, flipping and making a, a quick buck with, with our collectors. So we put a lot of uh, effort of uh, our hearts into making these collections that we believe establish a new territory for uh, generative art expansion as we take on the physical space and allow artists to express their creative uh, process both digitally and physically day one. And we're not ready to <laughs> to see this trading and so on, maybe in a uh, in, in few years. Uh, but, uh, but today that's not, uh, that's not uh, I think the right path. Sure. Uh, and Martin, do you, as far as kind of the general, maybe community that you've built, things of that nature with? Yeah, I mean, our trade exists for a few years already. The ICO was in 2021. So um, we have pretty strong community, I would say. Uh, of holders of the ITR token, the ITR, uh, the Untrade platform utility token. And the marketplace itself, uh, we have around 3,000 uh, users. I mean, holders, we have around 50, uh, 15K you, uh, holders. Um, so I think we have pretty strong community. Um, and I think, um, uh, I mean, 
Uh, I can say that especially our French community, because we're a French project, our French community is extremely invested and extremely active uh, on Telegram and stuff. So if any French people in the audience, you can have passionate discussion um, yeah, with the community. So it's, it's great. I mean, we do, we do love our community. Yeah. Do you, and do you notice that a lot of, um, a lot of the community, let's say buys and holds versus kind of the, you know, velocity of, of, uh, you know, turnover within, within the marketplace? Um, yeah, I think we have, uh, we have, uh, you know, a strong base, of course, um, uh, you have different type of, type of holders as in every project, but we have a strong base. Uh, of people who can uh, sometimes criticize us and um, but most of the time support us, you know, who are there for maybe two years, maybe three years and uh, really old. And some of them uh, became a uh, moderator on Telegram or whatever, became part of the team. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a project on the long run. So you have, you know, you build a little family. Um, it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So it, uh, and unfortunately, we have so much that we could cover and talk about. Um, but we uh, have a, you know, a, a little bit of time left. I wanted to at least make sure that we cover kind of any sort of closing comments. Um, the, the, this evolution from the purely digital or purely physical is really fun to be a part of. And we're, we're part of that with Galileo and, you know, you know, in a luxury context and with you, you're dealing with high end, you know, artists, um, um, you know, the marketplace side of things. It's very interesting to see that, that evolution. Um, so anyways, uh, any sort of closing cat, let's go around the room. I'll start with you, Ishmael, as far as like closing comments, anything on the horizon, like, you know, whatever you want to promo, let, you know, we can do that now. Sure. No, I'm, I'm, I, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to speak here. I also just want to say, like, I encourage everyone who's working at the intersection of, uh, the physical and, uh, and digital world. That bridge is extremely important uh, to both what is digitally native and also to truly uh, change culture and expand this, uh, uh, the horizon and the space and onboard new people. So congratulations also to what you're doing and uh, to you guys as well. Tony is the godfather of this space. I mean, I, I, I go to him every other week for advice. Thank you so much for, uh, for everything, Tony. Yeah, I want to, I want to thank you as well for this nice panel. Thank you very much for inviting, uh, for inviting us. Uh, I want to close with uh, just reminding that we are launching our first fractionalization uh, piece uh, at the NFT. So today, uh, the Pablo Picasso drawings that you can see on the big screen, you can start uh, investing in the pre-sale um, today at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, no, 1 p.m. CET, so 12 here. Very cool. So like right after the champagne break or right, you know, right when we start the champagne break, maybe go to the art trade. And if you want to learn more, our CEO will hold the keynote on, at the lightning stage at 11.50. Awesome. Let's wrap up with you, Tony. Uh, I, I, I don't have a lot. Basically, um, I think it's wonderful to be this early. I mean, we're, we're really early in this space with the whole tokenization, tokenization of not only art, but, but fashion. Um, you know, I, I'm really excited about what the future holds. It's it's uh, some exciting stuff that's going to come about. We're barely beginning to scratch the surface of tokenized goods. Uh, I like to call them network products. Sometimes people talk to them as refer to them as uh, fidgetals. <laughs> but uh, I think it's really exciting. Um, you know, I, I'm really anxious to see what what comes uh, forward, not only with generative goods, you know, one of uh, but just everything related to tokenized tokenized fashion. So. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys for joining the panel. Please, audience, give them a round of applause for joining. We're going to take a five-minute break. And, oh, do we want to get a photo? Oh, yeah, let's get a photo real quick. And then we'll take a five-minute break if you want to go get something to drink. That's your dollar. And to give us a precision, we would like to offer you this uh, bottle of wine. Bordeaux, saint emilion That's the Yeah. We have been tokenizing the bottle of wine. So for our speakers, we would like to offer them uh, a saint emilion bottle of wine, which is on the blockchain, supported by the blockchain. So this, you have the bags here. Let's get a picture. Merci.